Thank you. So you heard I'm a chief innovation officer, and this is a new thing in health systems in the United States. I've been here five years as the innovation officer, and I want to talk with you about the urgency of innovation. Some of you, maybe all of you, were struck seeing the news of the German wings plane that crashed into the mountainside with 150 lives lost. You may not know that in the US, in our hospitals, because of safety errors, that we lose one airliner every day. As a matter of fact, we've known that for about a decade. And I was a part of the group. They convened a national group of experts to look at this and try and understand both the causes and also what we could do. We got together and we wrote, wrote a report called To Air as Human. And in that report, we did our calculations and it wasn't 150 lives, it was 270 lives that were lost every day in the US just in the hospitals. So that doesn't count ambulatory care. That means when people go to a clinic or to a doctor's office with various errors. And we sat there for about 18 months looking at this and talking about it and we decided that what we needed was innovation. And a lot of that is technology, but a big chunk of it is changing human behavior. And that we needed to get that going. And the reason we had to get it moving fast is because we also learned it takes an average of 17 years from when an innovation in healthcare is developed and shown to be good before it's actually used widely in the health system. So this is the urgency of innovation. Now let me take this to a more personal story. One of the patients at UCLA, Maggie, is 66. She has hypertension and diabetes, and she's recently had a stroke and a heart attack. And believe it or not, that sounds like a lot, but that's not unusual for elderly patients. But the other sad thing about elderly patients is that they actually, almost half of them, have some difficulty related to their medication that results in a health problem. Think about your relatives, and you'll recognize what this might be. Maggie is into the emergency room and into the hospital frequently. When she leaves the hospital, she's got a bag full of medications. She goes home, and in her cabinet at home, she's got a whole cabinet full of medications. Does she just take the ones she brought home? Does she take some of the ones that are already in the cabinet? Some of the ones in the cabinet are her husband's, and believe it or not, lots of patients sometimes take their husband's or their spouse's medicine because they ran out and, well, their spouse has something like what they have, so maybe that medicine would work. So there's a tremendous amount of confusion. Given this, we have about $170 billion lost every year in addition to the lives because of these errors. So this cries out for innovation. And I'm going to give you two examples of innovations. The first innovation is about 10 years ago, and it's about as low tech as you can imagine. It was a brown paper bag. Basically, the doctors and nurses told the patients, the next time you come in, go to your medicine cabinet and scrape all of the medicines into a brown paper bag and bring it to us so we can see what you're taking and tell you what you should take and what you shouldn't. And in lots of research, that actually did make a difference. It was pretty good. But here we're ch asking people to change their behavior on a regular basis with no backup or facilitation. And if any of you are design and engineering students, you know that's not a recipe for success in the long term. So the second innovation that's much more successful and enduring is technology-enabled 
care from community health workers. Now, this may surprise you a little bit. This is not doctors. This is not nurses. This is people from the community getting trained to go into the home and help the patients with a tablet to connect them to the nurses and doctors and pharmacists. And this is so effective that it's now been reproduced around the world. And there are programs you can look at like Grand Aids, which is very well known. There are 8,000 of these kind of aids that have been trained in Indonesia. This has been used in Inner Mongolia. And in Inner Mongolia, they found that half of the patients that came to the clinics actually could be cared for by the Grand Aid, didn't even need to see a nurse or a doctor. And it's used in Mississippi and Texas and now at UCLA. So this is an innovation where technology gives human beings the potential to be much more effective. And there is another innovation in Los Angeles by Partners in Care Foundation, which partners with UCLA Help, and they send home care workers into the home with the tablets. And in five states now, it's been shown to cut the problems that we were talking about enormously. So as a result, for example, of Grand Aids, you can cut by 60% the problems for those patients in three to four months. So this is what innovation can do. Now, what's the problem? Why isn't our care so much better already? What's the gap between the innovations and actually improving care? The gap is that a lot of people in healthcare never hear about the innovations. They don't know where to go to look. It isn't available. The number of them that get published in an academic journal are very limited. So the upshot is that at UCLA Health, we started thinking about this, and what could we do to help? And I think the answer would be almost obvious to everybody. What if there was one place that you could go to see all the innovations in healthcare? And so we've developed that. It's the Global Lab for Health, and you can go to www.globallabforhealth.org. It's a nonprofit website that not only collects all the information on these innovations, but also includes a place where those who've used it, the doctors and hospitals and even patients who have used it, can post their experiences. Someone told me it's like Yelp for innovation in healthcare. Almost. But we hope very much that you will go and look at it. And we hope that it'll become one of the motor forces for change in healthcare, because it's urgent that we innovate more rapidly and that we spread the innovations that are successful. And that's what's driving us at UCLA Health, and that's what we hope the Global Lab will carry everywhere. So thank you very much.